All right, today we review our Native Americans. So let's hop right into what you need to know. Early Native American peoples, Mayans, Aztecs, Incas, Anasazi. All right, you probably know the first three. I might be introducing you to the Anasazi. Native Americans adapted or changed to fit their environments. We're going to talk about how they did that. Examples of colonists cooperating with Native Americans. So we have the Native Americans and then you have the colonists coming over from Europe. So how did they get along? So there's examples of them cooperating and trading is the best example of that. And we're also going to look at examples of colonists in conflict with Native Americans. Okay, they fought over land, land disputes. Okay, so we're going to take a look at that. Early empires, let's jump right in. Mayans, I want you to notice where they lived. Um, some of the questions when you have to know the difference between Mayans and Incas and things like that, a lot of it's just where they lived, okay? So notice that the Mayans lived in the Yucatan Peninsula, okay? They lived in Mexico, kept a calendar for agriculture and religious ceremonies. What's agriculture again? Exactly, farming, okay? So they kept that calendar so they know when to plant, so they're successful farmers. They came up with a writing system. They, have, they made stone cities with pyramids, all right? And they practiced human sacrifice, okay? They killed people as part of their religious ceremonies. We're going to talk a little more about that. With the Aztecs, who also lived in Mexico. Notice the Mayans lived over here in the Yucatan. The Aztecs are over here in central Mexico. Also practiced human sacrifice, as you can see from this pretty little picture here. Kept a calendar for agriculture and religious ceremonies. This is sounding kind of familiar because they borrowed heavily from Mayan culture, okay? They also built stone cities with pyramids. Their capital is Tenochtitlan. I know I'm saying that wrong, but that's the best I can do right now. And they were conquered by Cortez, a Spanish explorer, okay? So they, were, they still were in power when the Europeans arrived. The other early empire, the Mayans. So notice... We had the Aztecs and the Mayans up here. Did I say Mayans? This is Incas. They had the Aztecs and the Mayans up here in North America. The Incas are going to be in South America. Again, that's one of those important differences that you can see. All right, That's probably what you're going to be asked about, my guess. So they lived in South America. They built excellent roads. Did you notice how far and long their empire goes? Okay, much further than the Mayans and the Aztecs. So they had to build great roads to help them trade and send messages. They built stone cities like Cusco and Machu Picchu. This is Machu Picchu over here. And they were conquered by Pizarro, another Spanish explorer. Okay, so they were also in power at the time when the Europeans came. Compare and contrast. I want you to look at where they are. The Aztecs and Mayans are in Mexico, all right, nearby each other. They also had some similarities. They built pyramids, human sacrifice. The Mayans and Aztecs are very similar. The Incas in South America are a little different, all right? Their road system is actually what sets them apart. All dependent on agriculture, believed in many gods, all right? So those are the similarities. They depend on agriculture or farming for most of their food, and they believed in many gods. The Anasazi, we haven't talked about them much. So the Anasazi are actually, is the name of a tribe. They actually prefer to be called ancestral Puebloans, all right? It's not... I've actually heard that Anasazi is considered sort of an offensive term, like there's offensive terms for African-Americans. In fact, I was in class actually with third graders and we were talking, I said something about black Americans and they said, well, Mr. McGee, I prefer you say Af African-Americans. And I said, you know what? You're the one who's African-American. I'll let you decide that. All right. I'll be sensitive and respectful to you. All right. So anyways, I'm going to be sensitive and respectful to the Anasazi. They like to be called the ancestral Puebloans. That's what I'm going to call them. All right. So they lived in North America and they had cliff dwellings. So their cliff dwellings were really cool. So sometimes the only way you could get to them was from ropes. So enemies attack, you just pull up the rope and they can't get to you. It's awesome. All right. Notice where they live. This is in North America. This is called the four states region. Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona all meet here. And that's where the Anasazi lived. Excuse me, the ancestral Puebloans. <clears throat> so now we're going to talk about adaptation. So in the Northeast, you see that we have lots of trees. The Native Americans like to stay put, build something permanent. So they built log houses. All right, They took what they had around them and they adapted which means to adjust oneself to different conditions or your environment, all right? Well, down here, they had a different environment, okay? So they had swamps, so it wasn't the same issues. They had danger of flooding. So they had a different home. They built chickies, all right? They built chickies, which actually are raised up off the ground to prevent them from becoming flooded. 
And then, you know, actually in the Northwest, it was pretty similar to Northeast. They had lots of trees, lots of wood. They wanted permanent settlements. So you know what they did? They also built longhouses. It just makes sense. Okay. And the Great Plains, you have Indians that travel around. Okay. So they built teepees. They had plenty of buffalo skin to make their homes out of. So that's what they made their homes out of. And then we've already talked about the ancestral Puebloans down here in the Four Corners area. And they had clay and rock. So they made their homes out of clay and rock. The idea here is the Native Americans adapted. They adjusted themselves to different conditions and environments. All right. So what they lived in, how they lived, depended on what natural resources were around them. And especially in the case of the Chickies, what dangers they had around them, like flooding, they have to avoid. Now, next subject, how did colonists get along with Native Americans? So they cooperated sometimes. All right. So they had military alliances. So down here you see some Europeans fighting some Native Americans, but you also see that they have some Native Americans on their side. Well, Native Americans didn't all get along. They weren't all of the same tribe. And so sometimes that they would join in with the different Europeans to fight their enemies, other Native Americans, okay? So sometimes the Europeans and Native Americans fought together in wars, okay? The other example of cooperation is here in trade, okay? This is actually them selling guns to the Native Americans, okay? Which is going to help them become a more powerful tribe, all right? Now, conflict, what did they fight about? Well, they fought about land, all right? Let's go back to this uh, scene of the battle. Oftentimes, Europeans tried to come and settle land. They would try and take land so that they could farm it, grow cash crops. Native Americans wanted to use the land for themselves to get their own food. They depended on it and they were there first. So oftentimes they fought over land. So I wanted to put one more topic up here. Native Americans sometimes allied with African Americans. And you have a great example known as the Black Seminoles. Okay, so the Black Seminoles were actually escaped slaves who lived in communities with the Seminole Indians, okay? Because they had similar interests, right? They had different struggles. So the African Americans were fighting against slavery. The Native Americans were fighting to keep their land. They had different struggles, but they saw that they had a common enemy. They both had the enemy of the Europeans. So they actually banded together and worked together and accepted each other, okay? So this is Billy Bowlegs. He was a black Seminole leader. And this is him seated with a bunch of the Seminole chiefs, okay? It shows their friendship and their alliance, them working together, okay? This picture I had up first to introduce you to this subject, this is a primary source. It was a newspaper article that came out at the time that it happened, Massacre of the Whites by the Indians and Blacks in Florida. So you see this is an example of Native Americans and African Americans working together for a common goal against a common enemy, the European settlers. Okay. I thought that was kind of cool. I know that some of y'all want to talk about black history a little more. So I thought I'd tie a little black history, even into the native American history. Okay. So I want you to remember that from the thing that's important from that from history is solidarity is important, right? To stand up for other people, you know, maybe someone's Indian, maybe someone's black, but you have a common enemy, a common interest together. And so it's important to work together. Okay. Flashcards will be added to your pile to practice today. Have a good one.